Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at MSN Premium, the spiritual successor to MSN Gold, which we took a look at in this video. Well, okay, not really. That was just a 24 karat gold special edition of MSN. No big deal, right? But no, MSN Premium is a service that I was actually really surprised to find out Microsoft still offers in the year 2021. You may remember a little while ago, we took a look at MSN Explorer, or at least some of the HTML files that make up the program. And that was the version that came bundled with Windows XP. And what that was is it was a program that you would use with your MSN subscription to to browse the web and check email, though you could also use it without an MSN subscription. Now, Microsoft didn't just kill off MSN Explorer after that. In fact, they've been continually releasing new versions ever since, and the newest version is still available today, and it works on Windows 10. And you can get it through subscribing to either MSN Dial-Up or MSN Premium. Now, MSN Dial-Up is, well, you can probably tell by the name, it is a dial-up service, kind of like AOL or Net Zero, and you can buy it, but you have to buy it from the Microsoft Store. And it costs $179.95 a year, and that's with saving 33%. If you want to get it monthly, it costs $21.95 a month to get dial-up service, 56K dial-up. Now, MSN Premium is the other offering, which is actually cheaper than MSN Dial-Up, if you can believe that. This just allows you to use MSN Explorer and a couple of other services that are bundled in here with your existing internet connection. And because of that, it is cheaper. It's $9.95 a month if we go here. And uh, if you want to get it yearly, you'll save 17% and pay $99.95 a year. But what really surprised me is the fact that this still exists in 2021, because a lot of the stuff that is offered in here that's bundled with MSN Premium, you can get, in some cases, just with Windows. It's already bundled with Windows. And if not, there are low-cost or even free alternatives. So what would you get with MSN Premium? Well, you're going to get computer-wide security software, advanced phishing filter technology, technology, pop-up guard, and multiple email accounts. Now, advanced phishing filter technology, if you're talking about like a program that will warn you if you're going to a phishing website or a potential phishing website with like a pop-up, that's usually bundled with antivirus programs nowadays. When you're saying computer-wide security software, you're definitely talking about antivirus and anti-malware software, and there are a plethora of free and very low-cost offerings. And even Windows itself nowadays comes bundled with a free antivirus program. So we're going to see what computer-wide security software that MSN Premium has once we get into it. The other things are Pop-Up Guard and multiple email accounts. Now, Pop-Up Guard, if your browser doesn't already have some sort of like pop-up blocking technology, you could very easily get a browser extension that blocks pop-ups. And multiple email accounts, I mean, how many free email providers are there nowadays? You got Gmail, Microsoft has Outlook.com, and multiple email accounts, there's nothing stopping you from making as many of them as you want. And in some cases, you can just make multiple alias addresses for one email account. So the point I'm trying to make is it's surprising that they're still offering this in 2021, but it seems to me like all this stuff is available elsewhere, sometimes bundled with Windows. Even Microsoft, like I said, has free antivirus and free email offerings. It just kind of begs the question, why is MSN Premium still a thing? But there are people that use this. In fact, the reason we're able to take a look at this today is thanks to a viewer named Felix, who got in contact with me and said that he uses MSN Premium, he has a subscription to it, and he offered to add an email account to his subscription. He was able to give MSN Premium away to 10 people, believe it or not, or 10 accounts. And he made one for me and he allowed me to, to use it and demo it in this video. So huge thanks to you, Felix, for making this video possible. Now, the one thing you're going to get, if you haven't already been able to tell, with MSN Premium or MSN Dial-Up is MSN Explorer. And that's kind of going to be one of the major focuses of this video, not only just the services that MSN Premium offers, but also the interface that you're going to be using to browse the web and check your email. So I've got the installer right here. We're going to just go ahead and run it. And you see it says MSN Explorer, not premium or anything. And if you saw the MSN Explorer XP video, this will look very familiar to you because this is a very, very similar interface to the installer that we saw in that video. Even like the MSN logo up here looks identical, though it is changed right here. This is the new MSN logo. And the other difference is it just 
you know, comes up with a Microsoft account sign-in uh, window here. Now, what's interesting is, because remember, Felix had to create a brand new Microsoft account for me that he just gave MSN Premium to through his existing subscription. But what's really cool is he was able to use an at msn.com email address. Now, this was really surprising to me because if you try to go to the Microsoft account creation site here, this is if you want to create a new account, the only domains you can choose from are Outlook.com and Hotmail.com. I thought they had retired the MSN.com domain years ago because if you're not aware, basically Microsoft went through multiple rebrands of what is now known as Outlook.com. So we started with Hotmail.com when they purchased Hotmail in 1996 or 1997. Then they changed to MSN.com, Live.com, and now Outlook.com. Now they've kept Hotmail mail.com around all these years and obviously outlook.com is the newest one but msn.com you're not able to use anymore like i said i thought they retired that domain years ago obviously if you still had an existing msn account you could use that with outlook.com without any problems but making a brand new email account i didn't think that was possible but it is through msn premium and the first thing that it has you do is you have to sign the agreement so you just basically i mean you would read through these agreements we're obviously going to read through every single one of these here in, in total detail but you can see that it opens up and, and just the design of this installer is really interesting because it does not fit in with the regular Windows 10 design language at all I mean it kind of fits in with Windows Vista and Windows 7's design language a little bit I mean these are kind of arrowy looking ish buttons if that makes any sense but I think if anything this looks uh very close to the installer we saw in the XP video. So this is the Microsoft services agreement that you have to agree to. And we're gonna go with the custom installation option so we can choose what it is we're gonna be installing. So you've got MSN Explorer and you've got designer email whatever this is, enhance your email messages with stationary photos and visual effects. You've also got Microsoft Office Outlook Connector, which we don't have Microsoft Outlook installed, so it's not going to allow us to, to do that. And right here it says the estimated time to download is nine minutes over a high speed connection or 81 minutes over a dial up connection. So I wonder what they're considering a high speed connection because it's not gonna take nine minutes for me to download a 33.33 megabyte file or, or file archive but we'll see how long it takes here so we're going to click on next it asks us to insert the latest msn cd which we don't have so we're just going to click next so it's going to download everything oh it's playing some music in the background check that out oh dang this is some like elevator music right here man i don't what other installers have like background music Oh boy, I know I'm gonna get some comments for this one. Look, I know there are other installers out there that have background music. In fact, some of them are really detailed. Think about Command & Conquer. You guys ever installed Command & Conquer, Red Alert 2, or Yuri's Revenge? Yeah, those are some pretty detailed and very immersive installation experiences. But it's been a while since I've seen an installer that has had background music and things like that. Anyways, back to the video. Yeah, that was totally not nine minutes. So. But that's just like that leads me to believe that this interface probably hasn't been updated in a while. So okay, it installed MSN Explorer and Designer Email. It tells us, you know, open <laughs> to install additional features, use the control panel option, programs and features. So this is, I mean, programs and features was a Windows Vista thing. It is still a thing in Windows 10, but it's not the primary interface that Microsoft wants you to use at least. So this is if you want to add, uh, you know, additional, like if you didn't install designer email, for example, and you want to add it later on, you can go through here. So we're going to click on finish. You must restart your computer. All right, we will do just that. And oh, of course, it wouldn't be a Windows 10 video without Windows 10 needing to do some updates. So we'll be back in hopefully not a day. All right, so we've restarted. We've got an MSN icon on the desktop. Let's double click on it. Do you want the MSN butterfly on the start menu so you can quickly access internet and email? Now, this is interesting because Windows 10 start menu, this is probably talking about like the, you know, like in XP and Vista, you've got like internet and email up at the very top left. Windows 10 doesn't have that anymore. So it's probably just gonna pin it to the right side here. We'll say yes. And this will make MSN Explorer your default web browser. Okay, so we'll do that. And we've got a sign-in page here. Now it looks like it hasn't pinned it. So you can see here, nothing has been pinned to the start menu at all. Obviously it's not gonna be able to pin anything up here because it's the way that the start menu is designed and, and laid out now. So we're gonna sign into my account here. So we'll click on sign in. 
okay, I got a sign. <laughs> that was real. You got this nice music, and then it just asked me to enter my password again. Okay, so we'll do that. There we go. Oh my gosh. Okay. Good morning, Michael. Dang, I like the sounds. So the first thing it's going to do is ask us to set up phishing filter, which is recommended to have it on. And then it just says it warns you if the website you are visiting might be impersonating another website, which is exactly what I thought it was going to do. So we'll click OK. OK, so we've got and you can see over here, we've got our inbox. We've got the stock market. We'll definitely be checking that out later on. We've got links, photos, you've got Bing search up here. And over here, you've got an address bar. You know, this is kind of your web browser part. Basically what this is, is it is a combination type program. So this is where you can browse the web, check your email, uh, check your stocks, which you can obviously do from your web browser, but it's like a little widget over here. Uh, you've got very easy access to Bing, your address book, calendar, you can click on this and it will take you, oh, it actually just takes you to your Outlook uh, calendar at outlook.live.com. So this will pull up my calendar here. So it's not like an individual program. Now, from what I've looked at up here, the majority of these icons really just take you to parts of msn.com. They're not like small little applets or anything like that. Some of them are, but most of them, like if you go to favorites here, this is one of the little applets. So I can add things to favorites. So we'll say like, let's say we want to add this to my favorites. We'll click OK. So now when I click on this, um, I've got a, a, a link to this page right here. So this is just like favorites or bookmarks in Firefox or Microsoft Edge or Chrome. So this is your little menu there. Bing will obviously just take you to Bing. Next up is Mail and More. And this reminds me of Outlook Express on Windows XP. If you guys ever used that, this will probably look pretty familiar to you. Just the layout of it, though. This is a little bit more colorful. You've got some blues going on here. Very, very nice. Some little animations here. It's currently checking for email. We have just one email here. This is the Welcome to MSN Premium email. So it says, as a valuable MSN Premium member, we're pleased to welcome you to the latest version of MSN Premium. Here are some of the convenient features. You've got tabbed browsing, button groups, advanced security and safety. Find out more about the arsenal of programs and services available to help fortify your computer safety from unwanted pop-ups, emails, viruses, adware, and spyware. We'll go ahead and make this a little bit larger here. Optimize your time with easy and convenient access to useful Microsoft tools. Experience the power of Bing right from MSN Explorer's dashboard. Yes, the power of Bing, everybody. It's a power you don't want to live without. Bing is, as we all know, the most superior search engine ever, and it is wonderful that they have integrated that right into MSN Explorer. Uh, it's got a spell checker. No way, dude. It's got a spell checker. That's like the thing in Microsoft Word and OpenOffice and LibreOffice and like uh, Google Docs. Um, pretty much every uh, text writing tool out there. Okay, but still, spell checker is useful. Photo email integration with OneDrive. Okay. Now you've got the MSN Member Center, which allows you to view, you know, your membership, help and support, MSN settings, all that good stuff. And yeah. So honestly, I mean, like I said, it's just kind of surprising that they act like all this stuff is so amazing when they literally offer it for free. And they're saying so much about spell checker here, like spell checkers in bold. And it's like, oh my gosh, it's so amazing. But like you can get that in, you know, Google Docs, which obviously is not like a Microsoft thing, but I think Office Online, uh, which I believe is free. I mean, that has spell checker, but there are other offerings that, that do a lot of this stuff. So let's actually send an email here. So we're going to open up the new message uh, window here so I can type in you know, my uh, YouTube email address here, and we'll say subject test, and we'll say, hello, everybody. This email is being typed from MSN Explorer running on Windows 10. So I can add some emoticons here or emojis, but these look, these look just, these are like the MSN Messenger emoticons here. So we can just add some of these here, birthday cake. I mean, honestly, I'm getting a sense of like nostalgia here because this is very, very similar. I mean, just these, seeing these emoticons, this layout kind of reminds me of MSN Messenger a little bit. I personally never used MSN Explorer. I never had an MSN dial up or premium subscription so i never used this interface in particular but uh i have used outlook express before and this kind of reminds me of outlook express and uh so we'll just we'll just send this message here your message is on its way okay so if i go to 
my YouTube email inbox here. We'll pull that up. Okay, that's interesting. We got this thing from the Outlook.com team. Please sign into your Outlook.com account. Oh, and it looks like it just came through to my YouTube email. To continue sending messages, please sign in and validate your Outlook.com account. Okay, so you can, now since this is a regular Microsoft account, you can sign in to the regular, like here's the same email inbox just on Outlook.com. So I gotta verify this capture here. So this is Outlook.com and this is MSN Mail. Now this message doesn't show probably because it's not a, I mean, it's kind of set up as an actual email like it was sent from, if we hover over here, it says it was sent from that MSN.com email address. But my guess is this wasn't like, this is just like a local email that's already included with this program here. Now what's interesting is check this out up here on August 17th, 2021, Outlook will no longer support the Internet Explorer 11 browser. Switch to the new Microsoft Edge. So that is an indication right there that the embedded browser they're using in MSN Explorer is Internet Explorer 11, or it's based on IE 11. I'm kind of surprised they haven't switched over to Microsoft Edge yet, but hopefully they'll do that before August 17th, or else you won't be able to use Outlook.com. Though if you're just using this interface, you'll be totally fine. And just to show you, here is the message that I sent from MSN Explorer, and you can see it showed up and it displays even the emoticons here display totally fine. Now, if you haven't noticed, we've got this tabbed interface up here. Now to open up a new tab, you can click this button right here and say, I wanna to go to the address book. I can click on that. And here is my address book. Now, this is one of the other things that is, I mean, this is an embedded page uh, that's, you know, just included with MSN Explorer. This is not anything on Outlook.com. Now, the calendar is, if I make another tab and go to calendar, this will take you to the Outlook.com calendar. I'm kind of surprised they don't have a page like this for the address book here with the calendar because this is, I mean, you can just get this by opening up Microsoft Edge. And speaking of Microsoft Edge, that's what this button right here does. This just opens up a Microsoft Edge window and you can see it's the old Edge logo. So this is kind of surprising. Like I'm honestly gonna take a guess that this client has not been updated in a while because I would think they would change this Edge logo to the new one. Just to verify that, let's go to About MSN. So this is version 11.75. Here's the entire, I mean, they've got this whole version string here. And there's no copyright data or anything aside from 1993. International Correct Spell, Spelling Correction System, copyright 1993. So that's the spell check program they were so proud of in that email. Now, this doesn't mean it's from 1993, but it's copyrighted from 1993. The American Heritage Dictionary of the English Language, third edition, copyright 1992. I guess that's the dictionary they're using for spell check. Now, just to, okay, so here's that dictionary right here, the American Heritage Dictionary, third edition, right? And we scroll down here, okay, down to the information, the product details published on June 12th, 1994. And Amazon, you can still buy this from Amazon if you want. I mean, you can get a paperback for $6.32, probably used, or maybe, yeah, buy used. So the dictionary for the spell check is from 1992, or that's the copyright date. It was published in what, 94? 94. That's, how has that not been updated in all these years? I mean, if they would update the dictionary, they would have to put that in here, right? They would say, oh, it's the fifth edition now, or they would change to, a different dictionary that's newer. Wow, that is really, really surprising. Okay, so let's click on more info here. Oh, that's a great sign. Can't reach this page. <laughs> Make sure the web address of, I mean, this is a, like this is, I was just at this web page. Why is this not, let's just try to go out of here. Membercenter.msn.com. Okay, so whatever page that was embedded, like the link that was embedded in the about window doesn't work. Oh, never mind. It does. Okay. Oh, okay. So it was released. So the last version was published on August 24th, 2020. That's when this was released and it has minor bug fixes. But before that, the, the last version was January 21st, 2020. So they're publishing. I mean, you got one version in 2018, one version in 2019 and two versions in 2020. And there's not been a version in 2021 yet. The latest version had some minor bug fixes. The version before that moved the stocks bar to the dashboard. I guess that's this over here. Okay, so there's like TFA here, so two-factor auth. So that's good. Nested groups functionality, new users mailbox provision from MSN Explorer using REST API. 
feed options for the new tab page, added top stories to the new tab page. As a valuable MSN member, we're pleased to welcome you to the latest version of MSN Explorer. Here are some highlights. Okay, so web root secure anywhere for MSN is the anti-spyware protection. Like that's the, the antivirus program. So they're using web root. Okay. Phishing filter doesn't say what uh, like who offers this. So let's check out, like, let's go to safety here. So you've got Microsoft Defender. Now this was interesting because when I clicked on this, you see this Defender Win 8. It, this is like a short link here, but it redirects you to the page about the built-in Microsoft Defender antivirus with Windows 10. So this isn't anything unique to MSN Explorer because this just comes with like, you know, Windows Defender, you know, Windows Security here, you click on this. Here it is, this is Windows Security uh, that comes with Windows 10. So this might have before, this might have been, like it might have opened up. My guess is it would probably open up Windows Defender with Windows 8. That's my guess. Because, well, Windows Defender got its start with Windows Vista, though it wasn't really that great back then. Then you had Microsoft Security Essentials that was a separate download. And then Windows 8 took the two and kind of put them together and created this Microsoft Security Essentials-like program. It was a very, very similar interface, but with the Windows Defender name. So if I'm going to take a guess, that's probably what this was going to open. So you would click this and it would probably open up Windows uh, Defender in Windows 8. At least that's my guess here. But it just brings you to this page now, which just tells you about Windows 10's built-in antivirus, which is nothing unique to MSN Explorer. But you've also got web root secure anywhere. So we can click on this and this will, okay, so we have to turn it on first. And this will take you to here where you have to, so it's not bundled by default, you have to install it. So we'll click on install here. Nope, we can't do that because the account isn't supported. Now I'm guessing this is because of the first reason right here, which says you're not signed in with your primary account email address, which I am not. This is tied to another account and I'm not the primary account holder. So unfortunately we won't be able to download uh, Webroot Secure anywhere. You've also got pop-up guard here. So we can go to pop-up guard settings, and this brings up kind of like a settings panel here. Actually, this is in MSN settings. We can go to settings home here. You've also got the MSN member center. This is an entirely separate thing. So this right here is kind of the, the central page where you can get information about your MSN account. You can check your subscription information. So if I click on this, it will probably take, oh, it's actually just gonna take me to a Microsoft account. Oh, just the Microsoft account page. Okay, this is nothing. <laughs> This is nothing unique to MSN Explorer. So this is where you can get support. You can learn about MSN features. So we'll click on this. And this just tells you again, kind of like what comes with MSN Premium. Useful tools, Windows Live Calendar. Now again, the calendar took us to Outlook.com. That leads me to believe this hasn't been updated in a while because it has not been called Windows Live Calendar in a long time, ever since Microsoft killed off Windows Live and rebranded everything as Outlook.com. And it just tells you about Webroot Secure Anywhere, MSN Junk Email Guard, and the Pop-Up Guard. That's what we were on, the Pop-Up Guard. So we'll click on this here. And yeah, so it's like a embedded browser extension, kind of. So it's just like, again, you can go up here, Pop-Up Guard, if I want to allow pop-ups, I can do that. Allow pop-ups only for this site. We go back to settings, we're back in this page here. You can add filters. This is where you can add sites to the pop-up allow list. Now, the other thing is the phishing filter. So let's go to phishing filter settings here. So this is a very basic control panel here. You've got two options, turn it on or turn it off. And if you were to go to a website that was detected as a phishing site or a possible phishing site, it will warn you, which is something that, you know, a lot of antivirus programs do today. The other things you've got in the toolbar is money, which is going to, okay, MSN money. And yeah, this just takes you to MSN money, which you can access without MSN premium. Uh, photos, view and organize, really? It just opens up the photos? Oh my gosh, it literally just opens up the Windows 10 photos program. That's all it does. Shopping, what does shopping do? It takes you to... I'm gonna guess MSN shopping, corporateshopping.com. What on earth is this? Oh, it's like coupon codes and stuff. Avis, Budget, Enterprise, Hotels.com, Disneyland. This is like, I mean, I guess they got a partnership with corporate, I've never heard of corporate shopping. So let's say I wanna start saving on Avis. I wanna get a, 
Oh, we get the same security warning. Do you want to view only the web page content that was delivered securely? Yes. You've got a coupon code here. Okay. This will get you up to 25% off base rates. I don't know if this is like, can we go to retailcodes.com slash MSN? What happens if I go to this? Is this something you can access outside of being signed in to an account? Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> So I'm not signed into anything here. This is opened up in Microsoft Edge. And just to show you, like if I go to Outlook.com, I'm not signed into my account. You know, it just brings us to the regular sign-in page. I can get the exact same discount. So this is not behind like a paywall or, you know, you have to be signed into your account. You can just literally go to retailcodes.com slash MSN. Yeah, from what I'm seeing, like honestly, most of this stuff, maybe not most of this stuff, but a lot of the stuff in this program is tied to other websites and in some cases existing programs within windows 10 so here's the dictionary here this just takes you to msn so let's try to search for short sell let's go to dictionary here and oh my gosh really that's all it does it searches with bing it's not even a dictionary at all it's just it literally just goes to bing so if i wanted to find i don't know stock options doing a lot of financial terms here go to dictionary and it just defined <laughs> wow that is really really dumb what is the point of even having this in here i mean you got this nice page like okay but it's just all it does is search with bing it's not like a dictionary you can browse yourself like if you go to dictionary.com where you can like browse the entire dictionary this is nothing like that this just searches with bing you can say it's a dictionary yeah bing can search and and, and define things but it's not anything special. Office Online just takes you to office.com. Health and fitness, I'm guessing this will, is there like an MSN? Yeah, MSN Health and Fitness, that's all this is. You've also got Autos. Go to MSN Autos. Skype, yep, that just opens up Skype. So you can sign in to Skype if you want to. Weather, I'm gonna guess this will open up the weather. Or actually no, it's just gonna take you to MSN Weather. Even better, games. This is one of the things that MSN used to have. Oh, they still have it. MSN games is still a thing. Yeah, MSN used to have like a bunch of free games you could play online. And it looks like most of these are just Microsoft games now. And like Microsoft Solitaire Collection is a app that you have to get. Oh, you can play for free online. Okay, I didn't know that. So this is obviously not Flash based because if it was, it wouldn't allow us to, you know, use it because Flash, uh, applets are are blocked now but that's interesting so i didn't know you could play it online i thought you had to download it from the microsoft store but again i mean you can access this outside of msn premium msn worldwide oh it's just like you can choose your language it's just like a language selector here and well a language and region selector customize so this is where you can add additional buttons to the toolbar up here so you can switch members have a download manager we'll we'll add that sure maps news help print text size entertainment you know it's not all that's up here you click these two arrows you get the entire list here and some of these are just like shortcuts to websites so you've got like facebook twitter the microsoft app store will probably just yeah open up the microsoft store wikipedia you had linkedin microsoft rewards good news is this a website good news oh it's an msn it's like a page on msn news i guess it's all about good news that's something the world could use best deals that's something on msn You've got, okay, this is where you can change your, your text size. So this is a part of the browser itself. And download manager. This will open up. Okay, so this is kind of in that same MSN mail interface here. So this is where if you were to download a file, this is where it would show up. So speaking of that, let's try to download a file. Let's go to WinWorld, which is a great uh, resource that we usually, oh, what is this? Welcome to Highlight. Oh, okay, that's nice. So when you search the web or this page, highlight indicates the search words with colors to help. So that's this up here. So this, uh, so whenever you search for something, it will highlight all of the uh, instances of that word or phrase on the page. So that's actually pretty useful. So we'll click on this here and we'll get, uh, we'll get this version right here. So we will download it from the Kansas City Mirror. So we can save this file now, click OK comes up with your file browser we'll save it to my downloads i guess that's a new folder it creates in your documents folder yeah so we'll click save and if we go to the download manager right here 
Here it is, it's done downloading. We can view information about the file, all of that, view history, show all details, hide all details. So it seems to me that, I mean, if you remember in the MSN Explorer XP video, the application is very heavily HTML based because a lot of the, the files, that we, well, all the files that we took a look at were HTML files. To me, this looks like an HTML based page here. So you could probably use Marex to extract the HTML files from MSN Explorer. In fact, why don't we try that? First, though, we have to verify and see if it's even using the same file format. So let me just turn on, let's go to view here. We do not want to hide protected operating system files. And let's go into, so we're going to right click here go to open file location. Yep, it's still using the .mar file format, which is that proprietary archive. This is the XP version here, MSN core files. Again, in fact, look at the look at the, the icon. This used to have the old icon, it changed. And yeah, this is, I mean, is this literally the same, like, these are the two folders here. This is the new one, this is the XP one. UI contains a lot of HTML files. So we got, yep, we have UI. Okay, so that's been decompressed, so we can go to, this PC, C, MSN new, UI, and here it is. Settings. Okay, this is what I really want to take a look at. So this right here is the download history. Well, this isn't really in settings. Let's just pick a random page here. Uh, let's pick mail, email settings. Okay, I guess that's just blank. Mail rights writing email settings. Okay, so here's the source of it. I mean, it is a, an HTML document, obviously, but... It just doesn't seem to be showing anything on its own. But that goes to show you that it's essentially, I mean, these are all still HTML based pages and it uses the exact same archive format. So yeah, that has not changed after all these years, which is, I just find that pretty interesting. Now we haven't really taken a look at this sidebar here. So this is where you can like, if you had a new message, in fact, let me go to my uh, YouTube inbox here and I'm going to reply to the email that I sent myself from here. So it just sent. I wonder if it's using IMAP or POP3 and it's only set to fetch new messages like once every hour or once every 30 minutes or something and we'll refresh, we'll go to inbox. Okay, it just came through and now it shows up here. So honestly guys, like I am genuinely surprised that Microsoft still offers MSN Premium as a subscription service for $10 a month. Now I understand dial-up because I know that there are people that don't have broadband even in 2021. I know that might be hard to believe, but there are people that still rely on dial-up. So I think there's going to be dial-up services around. There's just gonna be a small amount of people using them. MSN Premium, I mean, you guys saw a lot of the things in this program rely on Outlook.com. You can access most of this stuff outside side of the program you don't need to have this subscription so it's like what are you getting for ten dollars a month i mean okay you can use msn explorer i don't think you can use this without an msn premium subscription you may be able to maybe that'll be a topic for another video but okay that's something but all of this stuff within msn explorer i mean the only real unique things to it is like the email client here the address book the included web route, which we can't access. I mean, unfortunately, I can't show you guys that because I'm not the primary account holder. And you've got like some other things, but is it really worth paying $100 a year to be able to use MSN Explorer? Maybe it is to you. Maybe you have a deep sense of nostalgia and you remember using MSN Explorer from years ago and you want to still be able to use it today. And if you have to pay to use it, I don't know, maybe that's worth it to you, but it's hard for me personally to justify paying $10 a month. If you really like this interface here, you could download Mozilla Thunderbird to get a very similar email client interface here. And I'm not the first person to come to this realization. I mean, here's an article from CNET back from 2008, right? January 3rd, 2008, this was published. And it says, is MSN Premium a ripoff? Enthusiast site notes that nearly everything in Microsoft's $10 per month MSN Premium is available for free via Windows or Windows Live. It's unclear how many people are actually paying Microsoft these days for MSN Premium. Many of those who subscribe to MSN Premium get it not by paying Microsoft directly, but rather because the software maker has a deal with their ISP. Okay, so that could be how Felix, I mean, maybe Felix is paying $10 a month, I don't know, but he could be getting it through his ISP. So in that case, I mean, if it comes for free with your ISP and you're able to use MSN Explorer that way, okay, sure, that's actually pretty cool, but paying $10 a month to use this, I certainly wouldn't do it. But there you have it, guys. That is a brief look at Microsoft MSN Premium that is still available after all of these years. If you're really interested, <laughs> 
if you really want to get MSN Premium, you can get it for $10 a month or $100 a year from the Microsoft Store. That's going to wrap it up for now, guys. Hopefully, you enjoyed this episode. If you did, definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do multiple times every single week on this channel. And as always, guys, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.